Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial series on our channel. In this one we are going to be talking about Spring Security together with Angular. For all of you who do not know what Angular is, you can visit this page which will actually explain you what it is and in short it's just a development platform uh, built on TypeScript, so just this sentence here. And um, we are going to be using Angular for our front end. This is something that we're going to touch in one of the later videos. So for now, you can just uh, forget about it. And in the first videos, we are going to be talking about Spring Security. So we are going to build our backend and we are going to include Spring Security in it, meaning that um, you're going to need some authorization to access our endpoints. We are going to build an API that's going to allow us to log in, log out, we are going to be building a session management so that um, every session that we create is registered and, and the Spring knows about it, so our backend knows about it and the frontend can use it. And if you don't have this session ID, you just can't access some endpoints. So there are some some that are public that anybody can access, but there are some that, um, yeah, you cannot access. And yeah, um, I don't want to give too much details about what we are going to do. Uh, but first, let's talk about the project and what do we have here. As you can see, I already have the repository set it up and there is one commit. Basically, this is the project setup. So just to uh, save a bit of time, I have created some basic um, setup and you can actually get it from uh, this commit. So you can um, check out this commit directly and basically you would have uh, all of this. We are going to take a look at IntelliJ to see what uh, we have there. But uh, before we do that, I want to talk about things that you're going to need besides the uh, Spring. So um, uh, we mentioned Angular. So what do you need for Angular? How you can uh, set it up if you do not have it? If you have it, then it's fine. You can just use what you have. One of the things that you're going to be needing for Angular is uh, Node.js together with the Node, Node Package Manager, so the NPM. And you can get it on this page. I will be uh, linking the... Um, the link in the description of the video so you can just get it from there from here you can uh, get the installer for the os that you need uh, install everything and you will also be offered to install the package manager so you want to do that and once you have it then you can move on to the angular again there is this page which explains you the setup and um, i'll uh, guide you through it so um if you basically you can do this project in 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 two different ways you can um check this out, so sorry, not this one, you can check this out, so this commit, have all of these things that we have here, and um, then once you have Angular installed, just um, uh, you would have to run the npm install to get some of the node modules, because uh, as you can see, this is not checked in, so you need a folder called node modules, we'll see it in IntelliJ, and uh, you can get that by running the npm install command, I'll link that also in the description, so uh, with an explanation, you're going to need that um, either way. And if you actually want to do it yourself, you can um, get an explanation here how to do it. You will be using something like this, so ng new my app, so my app would be the name of your application. In our case, it's uh, called frontend, so you can see that here. So we have an application called frontend. Um, so if you want to check it out, and I would suggest you to do it, so just check out this commit and then create a fork out of this project. But you can also start from the beginning. And if you want to start from the beginning, I'll guide you through it. So, okay, um, what do you want to do if you are starting from the beginning? You want to go to the Spring Initializer page and you want to get some um, dependencies. We're going to need Spring Security, Spring Vag, Spring Web and REST repositories. Now you're going to also set up your project here, Gradle, um, it will be a Gradle project, language will be Java, blah, blah, all of the things that you need, nothing really special. And uh, once you have that, you're going to um, generate this project and import it in IntelliJ. Once you have imported it in IntelliJ, it would will look a bit different than this. So for example, your build Gradle file, so this one, main one here, will look different than this. What you want to do is the first thing you want to inside of your main, so inside of your project uh, folder, you want to create a, a folder called uh, modules. You will have this build Gradle file here and you will also have this settings Gradle. So these are these two are important. Let's talk about settings Gradle. Here you're going to have some name for your project, whatever you named it, and you're going to include two modules. You're going to include modules backend and modules frontend. That's important. 
So this is in the settings cradle. You can uh, close this now. So models folder is here. Inside of the model modules folder, we have backend and frontend. So two another folders. And we have build cradle, which is just empty. So um, you need it so that this is recognized as a, mod a module. And inside of the backend, you're going to create again build cradle file. And this build cradle file is where you put all of your dependencies. So those dependencies that you just mentioned, they're going to go here. So inside of modules, backend, build cradle. And um, basically you can copy it from this one here that's got auto generated by the Spring Initialize page. You can copy all of the content and paste it here. So this is how it's supposed to look like. You can uh, just pause the video and see what we have here. And once you have set it up, you will have uh, dependencies for your backend. But then we go on to the main um, build gradle file. So this one here. And here we're going to have, I think it's a bit different. So you're going to have this uh, plugin section where you uh, have the Spring Boot version. Spring dependency management is important and uh, also this plugin for Java. You have some groups, some version, whatever you entered there. Then you have uh, things that you apply to all of your projects. So like a group, source co co compatibility and stuff like that. But then you also have things that you apply for your sub projects. So you can also uh, paste this in and then also for your tests. So make sure that you have the exactly the same things as here. If you don't want to type this out, you can actually just copy it from Git. So you don't have to check out the project from Git. You can just copy it from there and have it set it up. Okay, now that you have done that, uh, the next thing that you want to do is you want to generate the front end. So before you um, actually create this folder, if you have created it, if I said to create it, please delete it. And you would have modules backend, but you would not have this front end folder. So you delete this. So what you do now is you actually go to wherever you're so right if you right click it, and then you go open in Explorer, it would open it up. Um, in the Explorer and then you can um, you can just go with the command prompt you can go to the folder that you need so my front is currently running let me kill it and basically um, you would be here so you would be in wherever you have your project and inside of the modules folder and then if we go back to this one you can see this command ng new my app so what you're going to type here is ng new and then uh, for um, to, and, uh, the front end. So this is how we're going to name it. If you want to name it something else, uh, please do that. And basically, if you click enter here, it will create you uh, this folder with all of these nice things inside. So all of the things that you need for the front end will be there, except this build gradle file. So you need to create a build gradle file, which is empty. This is so that um, IntelliJ can recognize this as a module. And once you have that, uh, there should be some small pop up here for Gradle. Um, maybe I can get it for you if I change something here. Uh, yep, this one. So you can just click it and basically that will um, import all of the dependencies and set up your project and it should look nice. But if you don't have it, then you can just click here on this tab Gradle and click this to reload all of the Gradle projects. Once you're done with that, you should have everything that's currently on Git. So in this first commit, you should have this settings cradle, with, uh, in, which includes the two uh, modules that we have. You should have uh, the build gradle, which has the settings for all of projects, all of the sub projects, tests, all of that nice stuff. So please copy that from Git. And then you should have the modules uh, folder with two folders inside, backend, frontend. And uh, you would have the build gradle, which is empty for the modules. You would have the front end, which contains all of the things that uh, English CLI generated for you, plus this build gradle file, which you create yourself. For now, we're just going to uh, leave it as it is. We don't have much interest inside of it. Then we go to the back end. And for the back end, um, we have this um, folder here with the dependencies that we added to the Spring Initializer page. So we copied this and pasted it here. So these are the dependencies that we need. Spring Security, the Data Rest, and the Starter Web. And also we have the MySQL connector, which we are going to be using later. And this is for our tests. And then inside of the backend, you're going to create a source folder. Then inside of the source folder, there will be a main folder with the Java folder and resources. You can actually copy all of this from the 
spring initializer it should create you all of these things and then you will have some package however you named it and there will be an application class which you can use by clicking this button here you can use it to start your application and that's it basically if you run this you should have a running application we can um, try it but you don't have any controllers you don't have any endpoints you don't have anything at this point and um, currently that's um, yeah okay but we are going to be adding it now so as you can see um, there is this using generated security password if you would actually try to log in you could use this password uh, to log in but we don't have anywhere to log in so there is nothing we can stop this and we can start with our work so the, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a, a new class that will be representing our current user. So whoever is using our application. Um, let's create a new package and uh, let's name it something like, um, yeah, how would we name it? What would the current user would be basically our, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Let's name it user. And this is where we're going to be putting stuff that's related to the user. Now let's create a new Java class and let's name it current user. So um, this current user class will be implementing uh, something called user details. So the user details come from the Spring Security, from the core. And um, then we're going to implement some methods from this interface. And here you can see it, it, there is um, get authorities, get password, username, and some other methods, which we are going to take a look at. And we're going to add two properties to this current user class. That will be the username and the password. So uh, we're going to pr have private uh, string username. And we're going to have private string password. So this is where we're going to be holding our username and password and we are going to create setters for it, getters we already have. So let's uh, see what we have here. Um, this get authorities returns a list of granted authorities. For now, we are not really interested in it, but I can show you how you can return some. Um, you could go um, list of and then new simple granted authority and then something like admin. Of course, in the real application, you wouldn't do it like this. You would have a property here with authorities. And then when building this current, current user class, you would set it and then return it here. But for now, we will have it hard coded. And um, then for the password, yeah, we just return the password. And for the username, we return username. Now, is account non-expired? Um, we have to set this to true. So it's true that the account is not expired. Then is account non-locked? True, it's not locked. Is credentials non-expired? True, it's not expired. Is enabled? True, it is enabled. And that's it. That's our current class. Uh, that's our current user class, which represents the current user that's using our application. So this is important. When we are doing, doing the authorization later on, we are going to be using this current user class to, um, yeah, uh, to store all of the nice information that we have. Okay, I think that's everything that we want to have. Um, maybe you want to, yeah, maybe you want to see our front end before we end this video. If you, uh, so see the front end is that we enter the front end. If you don't have um, node modules, so I forgot to show that. If you go to the front end, you have this node modules where we keep all of the nice stuff. If you don't have that, you can uh, go to the front end package and uh, front end uh, folder and called npm install. So this would install all of the dependencies that our front end needs. But we, uh, or I have it. If you checked out the project, you probably will not have it. So you need to do that. Um, for now, it's not important, but if you need it, if you just want to start your front end to see if it works, you can, uh, you have to do that. And then you can type ng serve and the ng serve would actually uh, serve your front end. It would start this application on a port by default 4200. Then you can see it um, once it's started um, that it compiled successfully, blah, blah. And then if you go here and refresh, so I already have it opened, it's localhost 4000. 200 and this is our front end so this is one of the components has all of these things and this is how it looks like so it even gives you some uh, things that you can 
take a look at it, it looks really nice. So this is our application currently running. Not using anything Spring related, but yeah. Okay, I think I will end this video here and we will see you in the next one. So in the next one, we are going to be talking about a repository, an in-memory repository where we can um, store some of our users and how are we going to be using it. Yeah, so stick for that and uh, hopefully I see you in the next video. I can um, yeah, assure you then once we are done with this tutorial, it will be quite useful for you. So you would be able to use Spring Security in your applications. So that's everything and I see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.